Hello everyone, my name is Nils, environment artist at TR Division, and welcome back to the last part of the series. By now you should have a nice asset already, and what better way to showcase it than creating some nice renders. We'll be going over two softwares, which are Marmoset Toolbag and NVIDIA Omniverse or NVIDIA Create. If you want to skip Marmoset, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter, where we'll just be focusing on NVIDIA Omniverse. All right, without further ado, let's get straight into Marmoset. I won't be going over every single UI element or every single detail, since rendering is pretty subjectable to your own taste and to your own liking. Everyone has their own style or everyone can create their own style. Maybe you have your own lighting setup and it doesn't really matter in the end how you do it as long as it looks good. So to import your model, you wanna press this little cube icon or just press Ctrl I on your keyboard and locate your asset. Once you've located your asset, it will show up in your scene untextured. To get some texturing going, you just want to go ahead and click on the material folder. And if you don't have that material tab, you can just make sure it's checked here and then click those empty slots over here and load up your maps accordingly. Once everything is done, so your normal map and your albedo, you might want to check out some things. So it's important if you baked with a flip to Y channel to flip it again here in Marmoset, else it'll show up wrong. So let's apply this real quick and let's flip it and unflip it so you can see the difference. Also, one thing to note is for your albedo map, sometimes it might show up a little bit weird. So just make sure sRGB is checked. If it's not checked, you'll see the difference right away. It'll look off. So make sure sRGB is checked. Another thing you want to enable is ray tracing if you want to have some nice ray trace effects. So go ahead and check that and set the bounces to about like five. Going into the render tab, we just want to put our resolution to 4K or if you want to render at 2K or 1K, it's all up to personal preference. Set your samples to 1K or 2K, don't go above that. You won't really see a difference at all. It'll just take way longer to render. Then the next thing we want to do is create a new camera. We can do that by clicking this drop down a box right here and clicking cameras and then creating a new camera. Inside of this camera, you can change your field of view. You can change it to orthographic. And one thing to note is the tone mapping. The tone mapping, we want to put it to aces since in Substance Painter, we textured in aces. And to see the effect, you want to change it from draft quality to full quality. Don't worry about it being really dark right now, we'll fix that in a second. But let's go ahead and change the sharpness to 0.1 or 0.02. Don't go above that, your asset will look kind of deep fried, and that's not really what we want. If you want some bloom, some vignette, or some grain, you can just um, adjust it to your liking. Another thing in the camera setting that is important is the safe frame check mark. We want to check it so we know exactly what we're rendering. Anything inside of this border will be rendered. Anything outside won't be visible to a render. That way we can set up our framing nicely. So after that, you want to set up a nice angle. So this would be a bad angle unless you really want to showcase the back, but make sure you pick an angle that's very interesting to look at. If you want to go ahead and create a new camera to go ahead and zoom in on some certain elements that you find interesting, feel free to do that. But Right now, I'll stick to one single angle. And let's say this is about right. The next thing we want to do is go back to render settings and change our render camera to our camera one that we just created. If we're happy with this, we can just click this little lock icon and we won't be able to make any mistake by accidentally moving it. The next thing that I like to do is to add a backdrop. You can either do this by going to scene, add object, you can add a backdrop or shadow catcher, or you can create one yourself in 3ds Max or any modeling software of choice. So let's jump into our 3ds Max. After that, make sure your scale is correct and we can go ahead and create a simple box, drag it all the way out. And we want to edit some faces. So we want to delete these two faces right here, the top one and the front one. Of course, the faces are flipped, so we're going to select all faces and click flip or inverse normals in Blender. And there you have it. You have your own backdrop. Of course, you want to change some edges to make it appear a little bit softer. So you want to select 
these edges right here and chamfer them. Doesn't really matter how many segments since we won't really unwrap it, but this is about right. So go ahead and export that out and import it into your Marmoset scene. So inside of our Marmoset, you can already notice quite a big difference. Some metal, pure metal parts will get more reflection than without a backdrop and you'll see the roughness details a bit more as opposed to having none at all. So I always like to have a backdrop in certain scenarios where I have some pure metal parts. Nice. So the next thing we want to start doing is changing up the sky dome a little bit. So if you wouldn't have a sky dome, it wouldn't be um, this HDRI that I have right now. You would have the default Marmoset 2 pack 4 HDRI, but you can insert any HDRI that you want. You can create your own. You can download them yourself from the internet and you can then import them. If you want to change it, you just click library and you'll have an entire selection of HDRIs already in Marmoset. You just double click them to download and apply it. So I'm using the Sierra Division um, standard HDRI, but some other good ones I can recommend are Tomoko Studios and the overall default one is pretty good as well. Let's go ahead and add some lights. Of course, our camera is locked, so it would be a little bit difficult to navigate around to add some lights. We can just go ahead and go to the render tab and make sure we have our camera one selected and then just our main camera at draft quality. So we can move around freely and update anything that we need. Once we have that, we can kind of use any lighting setup that we want. I'm just going for a quick three point lighting setup, but of course it doesn't really have to be super perfect. You can add as many light lights as you want. It doesn't really matter. No one's really gonna ask for, oh, how many lights did you use? Or can I see your lighting setup? Just make sure it's pretty efficient if you wanna change around the angles or um, just the model in general. So I'm just going for a quick three-point lighting setup. So just going to move around, see where the camera focuses on and position the camera for the first slide. Click this little lighting icon here and it should have created our light. You can always manually move it by pressing W on your keyboard and you'll get the gizmo. So then you can move it and rotate it around a tad. Of course, you would want to change your brightness, uh, maybe move it up a tad. And let's see, I don't want it too bright, like so. And as you can see here, the shadow is quite sharp. If you want a less sharp or a softer shadow, you just change the diameter of your light. As you can see, it got quite a lot softer here. This light right here is just the HDRI. You can hold shift and right click to move it around. You can also disable your HDRI if you want or even add lights to stuff. So the next light I want to get in is a light right here. We want to disable or lower the brightness just a tad bit more. And then I would like to get a light in from behind as well. Maybe like so. Change the diameter just a tad for a softer shadow or you can just uh, disable cause shadows in general if you don't want any shadows at all. So let's go ahead and go uh, to classic again to see it in a bigger picture and you can disable lights which ones you want maybe move them around if you find that one isn't working that great you can kind of move it you can rotate it you can do whatever you like with your lights you can change the color of it as well or if you like to work with temperature you can check temperature cool let's say we're happy with the result right now and we want to render it out we can just go ahead and click render and then we can scroll down and click on render image and make sure you have the camera selected after that it'll render your image and depending on how many samples it'll take a while then you can check out the results and do some color grading in photoshop or whatever but this is pretty much it um, there's no real science to rendering. Uh, you can just move around with your lights, add lights, remove lights, and change it up a little bit. This is basically your playground if you want to add some storytelling elements, if you want to add some mega scan assets to it, or more assets that you created yourself, such as the boxes or um, the film tapes. You can go ahead and add that as well to give it a little bit more interesting vibes. But that's it for Marmoset Toolbag. It's not a lot to explain here. And we'll be moving over to NVIDIA Omniverse or NVIDIA Create. See you there.